so what are you finding out with these doodle books? Uh, I enjoy it a lot. I can, and you know what I enjoy the most is that I don't have to erase no more. I used to erase a lot, but since I started doing with like you say with pen, mm -hmm. uh, it's fascinating because you're trying to do the line without mess it up. You know, you're more aware of where your hand is going. You know, and my hand could just go in and do it. I don't have to do so much. I don't erase at all. That's what I love the most. Yeah, I find I find you know there's something about I love sketching with pencil. I love pencil as a as oh, a medium. Is. But I find when you're doing sketches and drawings, like in a doodle book like this, um, that you are better off doing it just in pen. Um, because it does take that, that feeling away that you can fix it. It's like, well, you messed it up, just deal with it and keep on going. You know, so, and, and you just go over it and go over it and go over it and then eventually it, it, uh, it, it comes alive. And actually it's all of those little doodle books. Um, I mean, a lot of this stuff's are really really beautiful. A lot of beautiful little drawings in here. See? So instead of doodles, they actually come out... No. You do want to be looking at life though. I don't know where you're getting, where you're getting these pictures from. I'm sitting in my place in our house. And you're looking out. Yeah, because see what happens is that, see in this process of doing this doodle, so much brightness and that it, we need the dark in order for us to see that. Yeah, well what I'm actually seeing here is, is that, yeah, it does give you the contrast and almost the value, mm -hmm. but like what I'm seeing here is that you're carefully almost um, looking at like a tree limb, you know, like actually getting the, the, the feeling of a tree. And what happens with these doodle books, if, if anything, if these were just horrible, but you were just looking at a drawing, and looking at your subject matter and drawing, is that these get stowed away in the back of your head. And then you'll be surprised that when you start doing trees in your paintings, how these little trees and things and doodles and things start to pop out. And so like if you don't really know what a tree ends up looking like, um, if you practice them enough in these little doodles by looking at them. Because I think what happens is in the process of sketching and doodling is that you're actually observing. And we never really have that quiet brain to observe unless we're busy. We have a hard time keeping our minds on task. In fact, one of the problems with, with us as humans is that we're never really present. So a lot of you right now are thinking about getting back and painting again. Some of you are thinking about going home. Some of you are thinking, when is he going to talk about painting instead of doodling? Some of you are thinking, oh my God, he's back on doodles again. Um, but the thing is what happens is that in that process of doodling, you actually are looking and, and observing and, and practicing looking and observing. And for a moment there, your brain's actually present. Now, how do you know when your brain's unpresent? It's like when all of a sudden you say, oh, I'm present. You know, because for the most part, it always wants to check out, check out, check out, check out. Your brain's constantly always. In fact, that's the whole thing about Buddhism and Zen, is that to be totally present means that you're totally Zen. You're totally like Buddha, like enlightened. Okay? And it takes forever. I mean, you know, and in my drawing classes, we practice this, it's like, we'll actually hit a bell. And I tell everybody to listen to the bell without a thought until the bell goes away. And you'd be surprised how long it takes for that to happen and how often you have to tell yourself, okay, come back and listen to the bell. You're constantly like, oh, because your brain there. And when you're drawing, uh, figure drawing, blind contour, to keep your eye on the model requires a lot of discipline. And to have your pencil follow the model requires a lot of discipline. And when you're doodling, you're looking at your tree, and for a moment there, you're present, and then you check out. And you're present, you check out, present. But the thing is, if you're just looking at a tree, you're not really present ever. Somehow in this conversation of eye-hand coordination looking at a tree, 
you actually check in. And during those check-ins, your brain is actually recording. And at some point, a year or two or three or five years from now, you need to paint a pine tree. And your brain will go, doodle book. <laughs> and all of a sudden you go, where is this tree coming from? And all of a sudden you've got it. You know, the brain's an incredible tool. It can witness an accident and then recall the license plate under hypnosis. And you weren't even conscious of the license plate. So it's an, an incredible tool to, um, to, to practice, but you've got to train it. And the doodle books kind of help with that. Now see, these are not just those little scribbly doodles that we're talking about. You can actually see, they're almost what we'd call sketches. There was in our, a garden, in a park in our, where I live, there were deers, and I was just having a good time. Yeah, and you know, the, and the issue, the only reason why we use the word doodle is because people have this kind of subliminal feeling about what sketches are. And so when I say, oh, do 100 sketches, you're like, ah. But if I say, do 100 doodles, they sound like fun. You know, so, so these are really awesome. Some of these doodles are actually foundations for paintings. Mm -hmm. You know, yes, we could say. I enjoy is the little book, it's so awesome. I take it everywhere, I go in the bathroom, I, I stay too long. And... <laughs> That's too much info. Yeah. <laughs> it is true, it's so amazing. The, the thing that I wonder about is that you're really supposed to be looking at the, your model while you're drawing. And so if you're in the bathroom, what are you looking at? Look at it, even like, where did you get the, the idea for this? That was in the book. Yeah. Now see, the thing is, what you um, may want to do is, uh, while you're doing your, your doodle exercises, you can actually drift off and start practicing your memory exercises, meaning that a lot of the doodles can actually come from your imagination, as long as they're intentionally after something. So if you're like doodling, all of a sudden you think of, oh, I'd like to try drawing a bear, and you just kind of go to the next page and you just start making one up, and you just kind of play with it. And again, it's an ink, so if you mess up, you have to kind of deal with that. Um, and one of the exercises we do do in the Power to Create class, and we'll probably do it in this class, is nuances. And in the process of doing nuances, the brain will actually trigger on, trigger things. What's that? Nuances. Um, What's that? Nuances. Okay, the nuances Blue is... Little detail. Hmm? Little detail. <laughs> well, it's, it's kind of like, um, how many of you actually, and it, it seems more apparent on fake <coughs> marble. You remember the the marble that used to be from Micah, and you'd have it in the bathroom, mm -hmm. you know, and if you sat there and looked at it long enough, it started to look like faces, you know, or, or elephants, clouds, if you sit there long enough, especially if you're a little stoned, and you sit there, you look at it, it looks like <laughs> leaping horses. But those are nuances. There's nothing up there that really gives you that clue, except the brain starts to pick little things out and form an idea. And when you all of a sudden start seeing a leaping horse in the sky, um, your brain starts to look at what's not there and tries to fill it in. Like if you could find the back leg and your brain starts to go, oh wait, that cloud's starting to become, no, it's starting to become an elephant trunk. Ooh, it's an elephant. You know how that, it's the brain is looking for, because the brain's constantly looking for meaning. It can't deal with abstract. I think that's the whole thing with abstract, is that people look at it and go, what is it? Because our brain wants to know what it is. Mm -hmm. So we always are trying to figure it out. So I think uh, what happens is that if you're sitting there doodling, and you're, you start watching what you're doodling, and you get into that kind of mind zone where the genius starts to pop in, and you all of a sudden start seeing a bear start to appear, your brain actually will start saying, hey, put a little bit more here, a little more here. Rather than starting off with a bear intentionally, actually start off with nothing and then wait for something to start looking like a bear. I do this a lot of times when I'm doing paintings on plain air paintings and I want to put a deer or a bear in. I don't sit and go, okay, this is intentionally where I want to put a bear. It's almost like I start off just putting a lot of lines in and I'll start doodling with it. And all of a sudden I'll catch an ear and then the second ear. And then before you know it, I'm actually like working on the front of the nose. And then I start putting the back of the bear in and start putting 
the, um, the rocks on the, where it's standing, and I can actually start forming a spot for the bear to be in. Now Jean today came in with a painting and she intentionally stuck a bear in, and then she was trying to work the landscape around the bear, and it's like, no, that's not gonna work. Uh, when, you're, when you're actually working with the doodle books to this extreme, you actually will start saying, hey, and I notice that you're starting to put like a little deer in the, in the bottom of this. And, you're, and you know, so these are starting to start working themselves up to actual drawings than doodles. But they start off with doodles because doodles are non-threatening. Mm -hmm. Sketching is threatening. If I said do a field with deer in it, it's like, ah! <laughs> How big are the deer? Where they, should they go? But when you start off with kind of like, ah, oh, here's a tree, here. and before you know when the tree's all of a sudden there, you can imagine where the deers would actually be standing. And so out of your imagination, you could start forming things. And there's a lot of information <coughs> that is caught up in the right side of your brain that your left brain doesn't want access to. And that's one reason why a lot of people have a problem drawing is because first, your brain's telling you you don't know how to draw. Yes. What are you thinking? You signed up for an art class, you should be actually doing something practical. These are the conversations you're listening to. And then all of a sudden it says, you want to draw a deer? What do you think? You know anything about a deer? We're, how big's the head, right? How big's the body? The deer running? See, I told you, you can't draw. Find a picture, copy it, okay? But the thing is, the right brain that's the brain that operates on, you know, like fantasy and, and nuances. And, you know, when it's a little drunk or a little stoned, it starts looking at clouds and saying, wow, that looks like an elephant up there. And it's leaping, you know. That is, that's there. And what it's doing is that it's forming things that, is, that it has been exposed to and connects it with things. And if you could tell the left brain to shut up, just let me put this on for a second. You'd be surprised what comes out of the right brain. It just flows. And it becomes a wonderful space to be. That's, that's what the Greeks used to call your genius. That's when your genius would show up. And so there was actually, in the, in the Greek era, that was actually you know, a, a, a god, a goddess. It's genius. That's where the word comes from. And so you would sit and you would work on something. And if you were so left brain, it just looked klutzy and clumsy and you would work on it. Even though you were a great carver, you'd carve, 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 carve. And nothing would happen. And sometimes you feel this with painting. You come to painting class and everything you do just is horrible. Okay? So back in the Greek time, they didn't take any responsibility for that. They just said, oh, my genius didn't show up today. We call it now your muse, you know. Um, but Leonardo da Vinci and the, the Renaissance artists were the ones that actually said, no, you're responsible. If you screw up, it's your fault. You don't know how to draw. <laughs> so anyway, so and these books are wonderful. Look at, you're just, you're going crazy. Look at, and you say there's more of these books at home? Yeah, I have it everywhere. In the bathroom. <laughs> In the bathroom. I have, when I watch TV, I have one over there too, because it's more entertaining than watch TV. Well, yeah, you just never know. And that's not a bad idea. You could buy, you know, a dozen of these for, a do you know, I don't know. I don't want to say, I don't want to say buy a dozen for a dollar because everything I say on YouTube is like, well, no, you can't. Those books are three dollars a piece. It's like, no. <laughs> anyway. So much for the doodle, but at least you got some more doodles done. So I like that. I'm Stefan Bauman. Welcome to the Grand View. America's National Parks through the eyes of an artist.